Hey, hope you're doing well. Andy here from Drive Steady, and in this video, I'm reviewing a Mercedes AMG E53 sedan. So listen up, Mercedes has quite a bit of history building amazing sports sedans. Some big and powerful, like the 300 SCL 6.3, and some light and nimble, like the 190E Evo. And now enter in the E53 sedan. The E53 remains as the only attainable AMG sedan at the moment. So does this thing continue in the footsteps of all the great Mercedes sedans that have come before it? We're gonna find out in this review of the Mercedes AMG E53. So before getting started, a big thank you to Keys Mercedes for allowing me to review this AMG E53 today. If you happen to be interested in this car or any other Mercedes product, they've also got a good pre-owned inventory as well. Be sure to give them a call. I've left their uh, information in the description below. So now the E53, let's start off with the exterior. So Mercedes gave the E-Class a refresh in 2020, or I believe it was 2021. And to call it a refresh is somewhat of an understatement. So it's a quite intensive quote unquote refresh that Mercedes gave to the E-Class. And I think that's good because when this generation of the E-Class came out, I felt that it was a little dated, almost like it was old as it just came out. I also felt this way about the current BMW 5 Series, but like the 5 Series' refresh, I think Mercedes has done a great job with the refresh on the E-Class, giving it a nice balance between aggressive sportiness, especially for this AMG model, and the classical Mercedes-Benz styling cues. All right, so because this is an AMG product, let's talk about the engine. So this has a three liter turbocharged inline six cylinder engine with a mild hybrid setup. It has a 48 volt battery. And all of this combines for an output of 429 horsepower and 384 pounds feet of torque. The E53's engine is mated to a nine speed traditional torque converter automatic, so no double clutch in this AMG model, but it has a standard all wheel drive system. Now I did mention the mild hybrid setup. This thing has a 48 volt EQ boosted system that supplies 21 horsepower and 184 pounds feet of torque. And in addition to that, the E53 weighs 4,350 pounds. The all wheel drive system I was talking about can send all of the power to the rear wheels if it decides that that's the right thing to do. And what does all of this translate to? A zero to 60 time of 4.4 seconds. Now this car's direct competitor, the uh, BMW M550i, is actually quite a bit faster. The zero to 60 time in that car is 3.6 seconds, but that also has quite a bit more horsepower than this car and has a V8. Now considering the amount of horsepower and the weight of this car, a zero to 60 time of 4.4 seconds is quite respectable. Now this also has the optional AMG performance exhaust. So let's go around back and take a listen to what it sounds like.
All right, so what did you think of the E53's performance exhaust? This one does have the blacked out quad tailpipes, which match the overall night blacked out spec of this E53. Now, moving on to a different topic called practicality. And because this is built on the E-Class platform, it has a pretty uh, practical use of its trunk space and people are gonna use this thing on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's talk about the cargo area. So there's a multiple ways of opening the trunk. There's a button on the key, there's a button on the interior. You also have comfort access right here on top of the license plate. You push this and once this thing is open you're greeted with a really nice amount of space. The opening is actually nice and wide and tall so you can fit larger pieces in here. I would say two large pieces of uh, travel equipment would fit just fine in here. It also depends on how big your travel equipment or your suitcases or your luggage is. But if this wasn't enough space, you have the ability to fold down the rear seats. And once those are folded down, you have a substantial amount of room in this E53's trunk. So absolutely no storage concerns, at least from my standpoint. Even if you're somebody who carries around a bunch of stuff with you, I could certainly see you being satisfied with the amount of trunk space in the E53. All right, so now let's go around to the side, talk about the air suspension that this car has and the really cool looking AMG wheels. All right, so now let's talk about the wheels, tires, brakes, and suspension. Starting off with the suspension, this has an adaptive air suspension, Mercedes calls the AMG Sport suspension, and it features multiple driving modes and the ability to raise and lower itself both automatically and manually. So you can control this using the driving modes, and there's also a button in the infotainment system that allows you to raise and lower the car based off of your needs, whatever you choose to satisfy your use case or the scenario you're driving in. And this gives it this dual nature ability of firming up and softening down uh, based off of wherever you're driving or the road conditions. So beyond that, the wheels. Now Mercedes has been designing some of the coolest looking wheels recently and it doesn't change here in the E53. Now the options, you got three different wheel designs and within those three you can choose between a silver wheel or a, or, or a silver or grayish wheel or a black wheel like this one has. So this is the optional 20 inch wheel. It's by eight inches up front and by nine in the rear. I was actually expecting it to have a wider track, wider front and rear a wheel and uh, more tire as well. This has 245 tires up front and 275 in the rear. And given that this is an AMG car, that's where my expectation is coming from. A little wider to give it more stability and better handling, but nonetheless, uh, the handling on this car is actually pretty good as I'll demonstrate during the driving portion of the review. But beyond that, once you jump inside the wheel barrel, you do have a 14.4 inch brakes up front with four piston calipers and 14.2 inch rotors in the rear. You've got AMG silver painted calipers, which stand out really nicely against the black color wheel. You've got the AMG in that black font. So overall, I really like the way the wheels look on this car unique, sporty, somewhat classical, blacked out with the rest of the car. One of my favorite design elements on the E53. So now let me take you onto the inside and show you what it's like in there. All right, so now the interior of the E53. And just for full disclosure, this car does have a lot of additional options on the interior compared to a base E53. For example, it has the full Napa leather interior, which is a $3,000 option. The leather is extremely soft on the seats, just all over the car. Really nice deviated white, uh, well, grayish, silverish stitching. Really high quality leather with that additional $3,000 package. I'm not sure what it looks like without this package but if you're going for the Napa leather I can tell you that it's a really nice soft high quality feeling leather. Now as far as the rest of this interior it's standard Mercedes fare. Mercedes does have a really nice simple decluttered interior and I like uh, that a lot actually and uh, overall it's a very high quality uh, nicely put together 
place to be to experience a car from the inside because quite frankly even though yeah it's an amg model you look at it from the outside it looks cool it's got uh, the really nice looking wheels but from the inside is where you're really going to experience this car and what i look for is something that's clean something that's with the times and what i mean by that it's got good technology the screens are really nice in here the steering wheel which he, I'll, I'll talk about here in a second is actually very cool as well um, but i think this really is a nice place to be as far as an interior goes so now that the overall kind of picture is out of the way let me jump into some details about the things that you're probably going to interact with most on a day-to-day -day basis starting off with the seat so this seat is extremely comfortable the leather as i said is very soft the cushioning is very nice as well the one thing that surprised me given that this is an amg car the bolstering is not adjustable. It's fixed unless I just couldn't figure out what button to push to make them expand and contract. But uh, the overall character of the seat is somewhat on the more daily oriented side. It's not extremely aggressive. The bolstering is there to hold you in place, but it's not really aggressive like you would expect in a sports car or something related to an AMG product. Now moving on to the steering wheel. So this steering wheel is a part of uh, the refresh the E-Class got or the E53 got. This is an, an AMG steering wheel. You don't get it in the regular E-Class. But this is a really cool, one of the cooler looking steering wheels that you'll see in the car industry. Twin spoke. It's a flat bottom. It's all leather which is really good. No Alcantara. Skip that for me. And the extremely cool and convenient elements of the AMG drive mode selectors here on the left and the right. So what I mean by the coolness, obviously you have the ability to change your drive modes using the toggle switches and the buttons. But over here on the left, you have another selector here that allows you to not only cycle through the settings within a, a particular area, like let's say your exhaust, you can turn it on and off, but you also have the ability to change what settings display here. So you're not locked into two settings. You can flip it to multiple different things. So this is that additional layer of conveniency. I saw this in the AMG four-door coupe and I loved it. And I think it's a really nice, thoughtful steering wheel uh, as far as feel and conveniency to use on a day-to-day -day basis and then moving on to the screens on a daily basis you just like looking at these screens they're very cool looking the font is very nice the graphics look really nice as well the infotainment is the latest from mercedes mbux it's got the uh, hey mercedes keyword that you can use hey i just set it and it turned on over here cancel so now that that's out of the way uh, back to the infotainment system it's very easy to use i really like the way mercedes's infotainment system is it's very simple everything is clearly laid out it's a touch screen if you wanted to you have the ability to use the trackpad so no questions about the infotainment system and getting used to it so that's basically the front uh, let me go to the back and talk about some of the leg room and how it feels back there all right, so now I've made it to the back seat and let's see what it's like over here. So I'm 5'10", 5'11", sitting behind myself. I have plenty of leg room. I have plenty of headroom. My head is not touching the ceiling. Uh, my arm sits in a really comfortable position. So overall, the comfort level back here as a passenger is good. The seating uh, cushioning is also very good as well. As far as how many people can you fit back here comfortably? Two people just fine, obviously. A third person of my size, you might have some issues. I feel like if they were sitting right next to me, uh, the shoulder room might be lacking. I might have to like crouch over a little bit here to the right. But nonetheless, it's something to keep in mind if you're planning on traveling with five people back here, at least of my size or three people back here, five people in total. Uh, you might have some issues on long road trips and things like that. Some of the features, I have a manual sunshade here. I have climate control vents that I can move around. I do have uh, a 12 volt outlet. Now, one thing I'm going to ding Mercedes Mercedes for here is where are my charging capabilities I only have one 12 volt outlet uh, nowadays everybody's got a, a connected device a smartphone an iPad a laptop give me additional charging ports here a USB type C USB type A I'm not someone who carries my charging head with me all the time so the 12 volt outlet is um, 
yeah, I'm gonna ding for it. I need a little bit more charging capabilities in the E-Class back here. I do have a center armrest and this should not be taken granted of. Some cars don't have center armrest. Uh, this does have a opening position here that gives you the ability to store some stuff. And you do have cup holders for each passenger, assuming two people are sitting back here. Now, beyond that, the back seat is a nice space. The overall interior is pretty good, uh, minus some of the nitpicking things like the charging capabilities. But overall, this is a really nice interior. So now, with that, let's move to the driving portion of the review and see what this AMG E53 feels like behind the wheel. All right, so now the driving portion of the review. And as always, this is what the key looks like in new Mercedes AMG cars. It's actually a really nice key. Uh, feels good, no plastic, and uh, overall decent key. Now, as far as visibility goes, no issues with visibility or safety features in the E53. Of course, it has a carryover a lot of the E-Series safety features. No visibility issues at the front. I do have blind spot monitoring. I do have lane keep assist. I have 360 degree cameras, so no safety concerns. Now, as far as price goes, uh, as I mentioned, this is a pretty loaded up car. So as an example, the base price of the uh, E53 is $75,000 and uh, this car as uh, equipped as I'm driving is about 91,000 so it has $15,000 of options including uh, the um, the interior leather the wheels uh, the trimming and all that stuff some of the other packages that give you driver comfort and things like that but so this is a pretty loaded car. Now the comparative or the direct competitor competitor for this car in the BMW lineup is the M550. And that is about $1,000 more base for base. But that has a V8 and that has almost, not almost, I believe 100 horsepower more than this car. So let's see what this thing is all about. Um, let's turn it on and let's go for a spin, shall we? So foot on the brake, start, stop. Exhaust at startup is not loud or anything. It's actually quite mundane and very smooth to turn on. It gives you a pretty comfortable uh, starting experience for the lack of a better term. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start off in comfort mode. And let's go from there. We'll, we'll build progressively from that point. Now in comfort mode, uh, this is something very comfortable, <laughs> just like the mode intends. This is a mode where you would drive it on a daily basis in this mode. The steering is pretty light, uh, the suspension soaks up the bumps, and you're just coasting along at a comfortable position. So now let me go ahead and put it in a sport mode. I'm sorry, I'm gonna put it in sport plus mode the exhaust turns on and this is a dealer car so I'm not gonna smash on it it is a brand new car and I'm just gonna be respectful to the owner so let's give it a quick pull just to get an idea of what it's like from second gear on a roll the exhaust definitely livens up when I drove the AMG GT four-door coupe that did not have the uh, AMG performance exhaust and I could definitely feel the difference with this performance exhaust compared to that one it's much more audible the uh, backfire or the crackles and the pops are much more apparent in the performance version of this exhaust so if that's something you're into definitely check that box because in the 53 uh, that I drove the four-door coupe the GT four-door coupe that was a little tame for my expectations in an AMG car but as far as speed goes this is actually a pretty uh, fast car uh, like it does feel very much so like it's 4.4 second 0 to 60 time it's not something where it's going to blow your head off with a bunch of straight line speed it's just faster than what you would expect uh, than what you get in just a normal Mercedes car so that's what it's intended for it's kind of that middle of the road between the 63 and let me put this back into 
comfort mode so it shifts on its own the 63 mercedes and then like the e350 or the e450 so this is kind of that middle road where it's got decent power let me give it another pull here this is in comfort mode and it and the transmission isn't as aggressive to downshift but it does have a decent amount of low-end torque to get you going even in the higher gears so no no issues with speed uh, i would have to drive the m550i to kind of give you a comparison i'm sure that's going to feel a lot faster than this but this feels decently fast now as far as the rest of this car the brakes are pretty good i feel like they i wish they were a little bit firmer i feel they're a little too squishy uh, at initial bite once you're in it then it kind of gives you that power that you're looking for in the brake pedal but I think this is tuned more for day-to-day -day driving than for sport-oriented like track driving where you want nice pedal feedback. But it's not to say that the feedback is bad, it's just I, I wish there was a little bit more bite at the top of the pedal. Uh, beyond that, the other thing that's actually very good about this car in all modes is the steering and the steering feel. And what I mean by that is in all the modes, it doesn't feel fake. It feels mostly natural. I don't feel like it's overly weighted. Uh, I do, it's definitely direct when I give it motion, everything moves. There isn't like a dead center or a numbness in the center of the steering wheel. So the steering is actually very good in this car, at least from the um, environment that I'm driving in, which is day-to-day -day basis. Now, overall, uh, what do I think of this car? Uh, I think this is a really nice, well-balanced car. If I was to option this, I uh, or if I was to buy this, I would skip a lot of the options. This comes pretty well equipped as standard. Uh, some of the extra uh, features and conveniences I think are not worth the money, especially once you get to the $90,000 range. Once you factor in tax and stuff, you're almost at six figures. Um, so I would kind of skip some of those things. But overall, this is a fantastic car. Uh, the daily livability of it, I would imagine, is, is very good, even on a long-term basis. Uh, the uh, looks are really nice. I think this car has a, re has a good uh, character uh, in the looks department, in the driving dynamics. It, it's not a boring car to drive when you put it in these different modes and it kind of switches between its character. My, just the overall dynamics, character, and my thoughts of this car are that it's a good car. The only thing I would look out for is, like I said, don't go too crazy on the options. Don't option it out too much because then you start getting into a different ballpark as far as uh, different cars in that price range. So that's pretty much it. If you have any other questions, please send me a comment down below or send me a message on Instagram at DriveSteady. But otherwise, thank you for watching this video. Until next time, drive steady.